welcome back to the Kristen Omdahl Show. This is episode 1094, and we are here live in Southwest Florida in my studio here inside my RV. If you are joining me live, please say hello. Let me know if you have questions for me this morning. Let me know what you're working on. Happy Wednesday. Also, AKA, happy hump day. Uh, gosh, I missed that camel. What was the camel's name? Did he have a name in those commercials? He said Mike, 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 but I can't remember if he had a name. I love camels, though. Maybe I will draw a camel for this month's cards. Um, if you aren't familiar, I've been hand-making the cards for my Patreon subscribers who are level three and above the last couple of months, and it's really been a wonderful, wonderful creative outlet for me. Um, uh, while I'm, um, working really hard on the knitting and crochet side of my creative business, I've been trying to not veer off and trying to stay focused. So having an excuse to work on other creative outlets has been super fun for me. Uh, hi, Judy and Donna, Melanie, Judy, Jane, Thea, Donna, another Judy, Sharon. Good morning, everybody. Happy hump day. Happy Wednesday. Hope you're having a great day so far. Uh, hi, Chrissy and Thea and Ruby. Good morning. We've touched on a couple of subjects in the last couple of shows and just haven't really gotten through each subject. So today I thought we'd do a little bit of a catch up on a few things. But one thing that, thanks for sharing Patreon, Judy. Uh, in the Patreon, the, what I wanted to say about that is that I've been having so much fun uh, designing and drawing and making handmade cards the last couple of months. And uh, I'm trying... It's what, today is the 7th? So I've been thinking about what I'm going to design for this month's cards, and I haven't decided yet. Last month I drew bees and made the whole, um, the whole theme of the card, layout on the front and the message inside about being happy, B-E-E, -E, happy, which was super fun. And I haven't, I've got an idea about drawing a field of flowers this time, but that doesn't quite feel like fall even though I don't really care it doesn't have to be thematic to the weather uh, but I have this vision of drawing a field of flowers and then writing something motivational or inspirational that has to do with flowers so that's where my head is but now that I realize it's Wednesday and how much I love camels I'd love an excuse to sit and doodle and draw camels now too <laughs> uh, let's see hi 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 Irene hi Bass Hi, Bonnie. Oh, Bonnie's working on the Sweet Clara top. Wonderful. Hi, Trudy. Good morning. So, a uh, couple things. Up. Well, first and foremost, and I've got to make a post here on YouTube for this, too. Do you know what tomorrow is? Does anybody want to know? Does anybody know what tomorrow is? I'm going to make a post with a photo, uh, and you can see it if you get my post. If you don't get my post, all you have to do is go to the community tab on my YouTube channel, and you can see my posts there. But let me just really quickly uh, share this. Oh, and you know what else? I can also um, turn my computer around and show you too. So I'm gonna wait and see if anybody can guess first. And uh, anybody wanna guess what tomorrow is? Tomorrow is September 8th. Does that help? <laughs> I just shared a post on my community tab. Anybody have a guess of what tomorrow is? Let's see. Uh, uh, nope. I'm, what I'm asking you to guess about is not about kids going back to school. It's something for you, not for kids. Not, well, not that it's not for kids, but um, I think anybody that's watching this today would benefit from this that, that'll be my hint i don't know it's not it's not the best hint someday it's not my birthday no nope. my birthday is in november i will be the big 5-0 this year i don't not sure how i feel about that yet i haven't decided if i want to blast it from the rooftops or do nothing i usually do nothing on my birthday um maybe go out to dinner with marlon i've never had a big birthday celebration in my most of my life anniversary of fridge podcast good guess but no that's in december don't you just love a good tease and a good guess? I love this kind of stuff. I don't know why. I always think it's fun to make people guess. And I do it with Marlon. I've always done it with Marlon, too. Okay, any any more guesses or you want me to show you? 
up uh, no nope. book release no nope. we have a pre-order for my newest book on my website right now uh so the new book is pre-ordered and you can order it now and when you order it during pre-order just like with my last few books you will get the ebook for free at 12.99 value uh chris is going to be 65 soon happy birthday okay any you want to guess some more or do you just want to know the answer I think Knitting Public Day is coming up. I think it is in October. The results from the survey will be on Monday. Great guesses, everybody. This is wonderful. In fact, we'll go over the results a little bit today just to get a sneak peek. Uh, yes, Leona is correct. Tomorrow is the premiere of Knit and Crochet Now, Season 13. I'm gonna try to lift my computer up so you can see the image. Here's the image that I just shared on Facebook, Instagram, and in a community post here on YouTube. Can you see that? There. That's the cast this year. We've got Britt, Connie, Lily, Rachel, Lena, and me. Really fun season. I got to do lots of fun projects this year. It's going to be lots of fun things to see. And the, see and the premiere is tomorrow. You can check your local listings and see if it's airing in your area. As soon as the DVD and digital downloads are available on Annie's website, I will be sharing those with you as well. Hi, Sharon. If I find out that I can get it here, we'll do a viewing party here for at least one episode. Um, I have to make sure that I can see it here because I don't have cable anymore, but I have Roku and I'm just, I'm waiting until the premiere to then start searching for it on my Roku. And if I do get it here, we'll either do, uh, we'll either do a watch party here inside the RV or maybe figure out how to do one outside. But don't worry, I'm going to have lots of options for you once, uh, once the digital download and the um, DVD box set come out on Annie's website. I will be able to share with you some really fun promotions. I'm going to be able to share with you a two-week trial membership so you can get the show and the, uh, and the patterns and then show you how to join the membership and also show you where to order the box set. None of that is up on their website yet, but I will tell you immediately when it's available. But in the meantime, the premiere's tomorrow, so you could certainly start looking for it on your, uh, you know, on demand if you have cable or however you watch. Maybe you have the PBS app. I don't know. I don't know. I'm not really, I'm not really tech savvy when it comes to the different ways to watch things. I just learned as I go. Hi, Suzanne. And I will have, um, and when I have all of that information for you, I will also be able to share with you how to figure out where it's uh, airing in your area. There's some, there's some tricks, and I've been on PBS for a really long time. Does anybody remember the older TV show that I used to be on? I was on a show for 10 seasons before doing this show. Do you guys remember that? Has anybody been with me since way back then? I want to say... Gosh, that might have been since 2010 that I started the other show. Does anybody remember that one? That one's been gone for a long time. Yeah, Tony Lipsy is great to watch too. Yeah, the cast has changed a little bit this year, but you know Knit and Crochet now has changed their cast so many times over the years, always keeping things fresh. Right. I want to wait and see if there's any questions about this before we move on because I do want to talk about some of my more recent blog posts. Uh, well, we didn't we didn't make it all the way through talking about the Stripes podcast or the Stripes blog post. Yet. Here's another question. Who reads my blog? Does anybody here read my blog? Do you know where to find my blog? Uh, yes, Knitting Daily TV. That's right, Donna. That's right, uh, Jane. And Joan, that's right, that's the first TV show. So Knitting Daily TV was produced by Interweave, and Interweave was the first, uh, was where I started writing my books in the beginning. So I started by, and started writing for their, their magazine. So I started with their magazine, then their book department, and then they called me to be um, part of the show. 
and uh, so funny because they offered me a, a part of, it was called Knitting Daily TV, and they offered me the crochet corner, and I was not their first choice. Uh, but the other people that were offered the position turned it down because they didn't like the connotation of be putting crochet in the corner. And me, I was like, I can go on TV? <laughs> okay. <laughs> Thank you, Marlene. Uh, Chris reads my blog. Great. I was just curious how often people read my blog and if it is easy to access or if you would like me to tell you more often when I've written a blog post, especially something that's informative or educational, which I'd like to think most of my blog posts are. Um, but yeah, do you read it? Do you know where it's at? I can share the link to the actual blog section of my website. You can get to it from the top of my website. Does everybody have it? Does anybody have questions about how to navigate my website? Do you want me to make a video on how to find things? Do you know where to find things? Here's where to find my blog. Thea forgets and would like to know. Uh, Sharon would like to know. Great. There is a lot, I do work a lot on making things very educational over there, so yeah, if you're not familiar with what's going on over there, we might need to figure out a better way for me to uh, communicate it better. I could just make, dedicate an episode of the KO show to talking about them each time too, you know, um, like we did for the stripes, the stripe variations for the Easy Breezy Shawl. Um, now, we did talk a little bit about the design challenge yesterday because I felt like it was new and I really wanted to get the information out to you. But also on Tuesdays, I try to keep the news aspect of the show really minimal because I want to focus on the charity aspect on Tuesdays. So today, I thought we could take a deeper dive. Oh, oh here's the third one. A deeper dive into the design challenge. Uh, blog post that I released yesterday and make sure everybody understands what to do and how to do it. I'm going to check. Did you know you can check the results on the page too? Let me show you. So here's here's yesterday's blog post about the design challenge and I'm going to scroll back up to the top. So there's the beginning of it, right? Okay, and then if you scroll down to the three pulls, let's go to the back button real quick. So after you you can make your choices whether which project you want to see me make, which yarn color you want me to use, and which stitch pattern you want me to use. And once you voted, you can click on the results here and see the uh, and get uh, in real time. This is how it the vote is going so far. So at the moment, the Cardi Wrap is the winning project. And right now, denim blue is the winning color. And right now, stitch pattern C is the winning stitch pattern. So if you're curious about how to pick these, here are the four project styles. I just did a real quick schematic of a top-down triangular shawl, a vest with side vents, a cardi wrap, you know, a rectangular wrap with two armholes or a long sleeve pullover. So those were the four project um, um, options. And then here's stitch pattern A shown in the chart and the swatch. Stitch pattern B shown in the chart and the swatch. Then stitch pattern C shown in the chart and the swatch. So you would choose either A, B, or C. And notice that they go from left to right if you have trouble remembering which is which. And then the three colors are denim blue, te peacock teal, and sea green. They are not the accurate colors of the yarn that I use for the swatches, just because I, uh, just in case I don't end up using the same yarn, I just wanted to go by what the colors represented to me as far as color goes. And um, Joan would like to know how to navigate, and how to navigate the website, I guess you mean, okay. Yeah, we can do more uh, videos on that too. But if you haven't already voted, please go over and vote. I think this is a really fun way to be interactive of the design process and to give you a little more of a behind the scenes of what goes into it. I would be choosing these things on these three things on my own. Yes, I chose all four of them and three of them. Uh, 
Donna would like me, Donna is new to knitting and crochet, so welcome, wonderful to have you here. Would like to discuss different yarns. Do, um, maybe you mean like the different weights of yarn and uses for the different fibers. Okay, that's, uh, that's certainly a valid uh, question. We could certainly do a deeper dive into fiber content. I think I would like to have some examples of everything in order to do that. But yeah, we could certainly talk about fiber content and different weights of yarn. I have some po blog posts about that already. I'll have to look for them though to make sure that I, we can, t uh, you know what? I'll do a little research and get back to you on that. Let's see. Hi, Chantel. Oh, and then I thought that I'd show you those swatches up close again, too. So this is stitch pattern A. And as you can see, it's offsetting five double crochet shells with one double crochet. I think this is the least popular in the voting. I thought for sure this was going to be <laughs> the one that got the most votes, and I'm completely wrong. This is stitch pattern B. And then here is stitch pattern C, which is columns of five double crochet shells and one double crochet columns. Uh, and this is the one that's winning right now. Isn't that interesting? And then the peacock teal is the color that's winning. And the cardi wrap with armhole openings is the project that's winning right now. Very interesting. Uh, I didn't know. I had no idea which. Pro I thought maybe the top down crochet shawl was going to be. The number one winner and it is by far the I don't want to call it the dud because there's no such thing as a dud <laughs> in a pretty lace pattern uh, but it's the it's the project that's got the least amount of votes the one winning right now is the cardi wrap with the long sleeve pullover in the second spot the vest with side vents is in the third spot and the triangular shawl only has nine percent of the votes so very interesting I, are you enjoying this? I'm really enjoying this so far. And you're going to learn so much more in the process because once I decide, once I close it and say, okay, these are the winners. Um, yeah, it definitely depends on what you're making for regarding stitch patterns. Definitely. But at, at all three of these would be great for any of those four projects. They're all simple enough. I tried to make things that I thought were fairly simple. Um, this one has some cluster stitches, but in general, these are all fairly simple stitch patterns. So I thought they were good candidates to make any of those four projects relatively simple. But I, as we go along now, we're going to wait until I said I was going to give the whole process a week. So on Monday, I will take down the polls, share the results, like I'll share it as a screenshot on there instead of the actual polls so that you can see the winners. But um, at that point, I'll just start showing you the next steps. The, the uh, you know, met, met, I've already blocked these. So I've already, after I crocheted, if, well, first I made the charts, and I might show that process too when we have, when we decide what the fitting stitch, finished final stitch pattern is. <laughs> then I'll show you how I make the chart. Then I'll show you how to make the swatch, how I block the swatch, how I measure the blocked dried swatch. It, and that's actually something that I don't often talk about because I gotta tell you, it's not just about washing your swatch and blocking it. It's about letting it dry too because sometimes when you wash, when you wash something, it does open up quite a bit when it's wet and it does shrink back a tiny bit when it dries. So. That's one of the reasons that I like to stretch things out when they're wet, because then it gives it the ability to do its natural relaxing back as well. So not only is the unblock swatch having, does the, the unblock swatch has its own unique measurement, the wet block swatch has its own unique measurement, and the, um, and the dried block swatch has its own unique measurement. Sometimes they're similar and sometimes they're vastly different. Uh, and how dense you knit or crochet something intentionally or unintentionally also has a lot to do with how different, uh, how much difference there is in those measurements. When you're doing lace and things that are intentionally loose, there is more difference between the unblocked and the blocked state. 
when something is denser like this sample from my current from my most recent knitting class this is one of the swatches from the um, introduction to knitting part two course that's just released last week um, this is a relatively dense stitch pattern and so there was very little size difference between the blocked and unblocked swatch but if you don't know you should always do it uh, and in general the looser or lacier something is the more difference there is between a blocked and unblocked swatch than in something dense so if you didn't know that it's really important to know that hi Deanna hi Barbara Uh, Maria asked where to go vote and Judy shared the link. Thank you. Shared, Judy sharing a link to my knitting course as well. And I did touch base a little bit on that yesterday, but if you have any questions about the skill level or what's involved in this class, I can certainly show you that. So the introduction to knitting series of courses is based upon someone never knitting before so part one is literally casting on for the first time making the knit stitch and making the purl stitch for the first time and then we do go on it, it it's the course is a little over an hour long and it, we do go on and make some stitch patterns combining knit and crochet uh, and then we make a super simple knit stitch scarf which is garter stitch uh, but I add a slip stitch to the first stitch at the edge of each row to give it a really crisp finish. And then you also learn a couple of casting on techniques, including back loop, um, long tail, and knit cast on, and then how to bind off. Unless you are brand new to knitting, the part one knitting course may not be something that you need. However, in the second knitting course, we do take a much deeper dive into knitting and we turn and we start working uh, with circular knitting needles, knitting in the round. So if you're new to knitting in the round, by all means, the second course would be very beneficial to you. If you don't know how to convert those four basic stitch patterns that we learned in the first course from knitting in rows to knitting in rounds, that's something that might be beneficial to you. So if you know how to do garter stitch in rows but not in rounds, it's completely different. You're gonna learn both in the second uh, course. The handout will have the instructions for, so let me just explain the four stitch pattern. So we're gonna, we do garter stitch, seed stitch, stockinette stitch, and ribbing, one by one rib stitch. I teach you how to do all four of these individually in the second course, and then I show you how to combine all of those stitch patterns to make this sampler stitch cowl. In this section of the court, so you're going to learn some tips and tricks along the way in all four of these sections of the video. And then when you get to this section of the course, you are literally going to be crocheting or knitting along with me for the entire project. So if you're somebody that wants someone to knit with you, like having someone sit there for every stitch, every round, I actually recorded every single stitch in every single round while I made this. I explain it in the beginning of the round what we're going to do. I separate the videos into each of the individual stripes. There's seven stripes here. And I also slow down the rep repetition of the stitches throughout each round so that if you want to play and pause and have someone knit with you to make your first cowl in the round with sampler stitches, I can sit right there with you for the whole thing. And I think that's really incredible. Um, and then after, and then beyond that, at the end of the video, at the end of the course, there's a ton of videos. <laughs> at the end of the course, I have a video on troubleshooting where I'm going to show you how to unravel stitches to go back a few stitches across your row around to fix something, but also show you how to handle a drop stitch um, if you drop one stitch, how to pick it up to knit it 
straight up or how to combine knit and pearls to support, to pick it back up in pattern. And then I also show you how, if you dropped multiple stitches, how to pick all of them back up. So lots of great troubleshooting if you've never done that before. Um, I knit English style, Sharon. I knit English style, meaning that I hold my yarn in my right hand. Wonderful, Deanna. So I just, all of this is explained on the course page, but if any of that appeals to you, or if you think that there might be things, sometimes when we learn on our own, we don't know all the tips and tricks. And so if you, maybe you've knit in the round before, but you really don't know how to go back and forth between patterns, or maybe you don't know how to do garter stitch in the round and in rows or seed stitch or how to compare and contrast them between rows and rounds all of that would be beneficial plus you get the pattern for making this and also i show you different versions of blocking in the video you're going to see how to mist block how to steam block how to wet block and how to pin something out so there's a lot the, this course is over four hours of video, so as you can see, there's a lot of information there, and you never know if you're going to learn a tip or trick along the way that you maybe didn't already know. So I'm not saying it's for everybody, but I know some people have been confused about whether or not um, it's something that they could use. If any of that sounds interesting to you, you could probably learn something. Unless you're a master at picking up drop stitches, honestly for $19.99 to learn how to pick up drop stitches and not have to unravel your whole project ever again, um, that would be worth, <laughs> that's worth its weight in gold, let alone worth $19.99. Um, so like I said, if any of that, there, it's a much deeper dive because there's more to it. To learn just the first stitches is important, and that's why the first class was important. But what we're doing in all of these courses is picking up from where we left off on the last one to move forward. So we learn these stitches flat in rows in the first course. Now in the second course, we learn how to work them in the round, and then how to combine things in the same project, combine stitch patterns in the same project. So in my opinion, I feel like this picks up from where we left off. Carrie says it's been very helpful to her. Wonderful! Yeah, that's another thing, Joan. Uh, knitting in the, your gauge is different when you knit flat in rows and knit in the round. Same with crochet. Not all the time, but it's often enough that it's important to do things specifically just to be sure. So if you're going to be making something that's worked in the round, whether it's a cowl, a hat, a, a pullover, sleeves, pants, whatever, anything that's knit in the round, if the gauge, if to get gauge, you're better off doing a swatch in the round to see if your stitches are the same gauge as flat because it's not always the case and certainly stitch pattern or your gauge in different stitch patterns can vary quite a bit as well um, your sometimes yes sometimes no but like if you're doing color work your your gauge is going to be way tighter than if you're just doing working in one color because of carrying that work across the back side or from carrying your yarns underneath like with um, like with tapestry crochet, uh, there's a lot of different reasons, there's a lot of different color work techniques, and depending on your <laughs> be one thing if they were spam calls, they're friends and family. Ah, ah great point Judy yes when uh, make sure that you log into your account before placing an order on my website so you get the full benefit of it because um, once you have an account you have your own section on my website so let's see if my account see this section here okay so let's look at this real quick so I'm logged into my account right now on my website and you see this up here it would tell you to log in if you weren't logged in it has my account right there and you can go to your dashboard 
And look at this. My dashboard has all my orders, my gift cards, my downloads, account details, payment methods, addresses, courses, points, refer a friend, wish list, and my wish and my wait lists. So if you go to downloads, any pattern or course that you have purchased while logged into your account is going to be there every single one they're always going to be organized by default by the most recent thing that you purchased so you'll have to scroll down if it's something that you purchased a while ago but even if you lose your email even if you have a new device your downloads are always in your courses are always going to be in your account 24 7 with unlimited downloads. So it really just adds a whole lot of, of value. Adds a whole lot of value to purchasing. Uh, yeah, Deanna, great point. If you never knew how to um, unra uh, unravel back for a drop stitch, that's worth its weight in gold to learn that, yes. Yeah, your download shows your patterns as well as your course downloads. That's the other thing. This course comes with a 28-page download. There's tons of information in there. Hi, Stanshell. The download for Introduction to Knitting Part 2. This course download has 28 pages of instructions and information, including a glossary and the pattern for the cowl and all sorts of things. Uh, let's see. All right, anybody have any other questions? Man, we ran out of time. It's already 1030. All right, I don't see any other questions, so I'm going to get back to work. I brought out other stuff to show you today, but we ran out of time. I'll save this for another day. Yes, Judy has a great point. As long as you're logged in, anything that you purchase and download will be in that account. If you are not logged into your account at the time of purchase, it will not show up there. So you've got to make sure that you're logged in. All right. Well, thank you all so much for taking time out of your busy day to spend a few minutes here with me. I didn't even mention what I'm wearing. I'm wearing the Jasmine crochet sleeve pattern today and also wearing my Kelly earrings. That's okay, Sanchelle. It'll be recorded soon. Ugh, I wanted to ask you about crochet and fabric projects too. Anyway, I kind of I have an interest in doing a crochet, uh, doing a knit on fabric, like cutting out the yoke of a shirt and knitting a yoke. If anybody's interested in that, let me know. I know we've done crochet ones. I can do more crochet ones too, but I was thinking about doing a knitting one. Interested to see if anybody has interest in that. Anyhow. Thank you all so much for taking time out of your busy day to spend a few minutes here with me. I hope you enjoyed chatting about the crochet design challenge. And if you have a chance, go on over and vote. I uh, hope I cleared up some things on the benefits of the introduction to knitting course part two. And oh yeah, and let's uh, get ready for the premiere of season 13 of Knit and Crochet Now, which starts tomorrow. Let me know in the comments if you find it in your area and let me know what episode you're going to watch. And I don't know, let's keep talking about it. It's so exciting. All right, let us make time to create, share, and inspire today and every day. Have a wonderful day, everybody, and I'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.